Jonathan, I asked you last week who you thought gave the Giants a better chance to win ahead of last week's game or Monday night's game. And I was in agreement with you, but you said Tyrod Taylor. Well, after watching Tommy DeVito, the now reigning NFC Offensive Player of the Week, has your answer changed on that question moving forward? Uh, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a week-to-week thing, especially with a guy so unproven like Tommy DeVito. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a fan of his, for sure. But if you ask me, you know, before last this last performance, it was, a, you know, Tyrod Taylor. But then after this, it's like, okay, he's 3-1. and one, He's doing a good job in protecting the football. He, for some, he figured out how not to get sacked. <laughs> no sacks last week. Uh, he was able to step up. He made big plays. That that last uh, two minute drive with only one thirty three left on the clock to make the plays down the field to make the to have the poise. He's so impressive and 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 it's so crazy because he's an undrafted kid. He's not a big guy. He, he's not that fast. He doesn't have a great arm, but he has man. He has that moxie, man, and and you see it. And, man, was MetLife electric on Monday night, fellas. Man, yeah. it was because of Tommy DeVito, guys. Yo, no, no doubt. Jonathan, who's he remind you of? Any player comp? Anybody jump to mind? Oh, man. Not not really, but, uh, man. In terms of, like, how, how the guys just, like, rally around him and how he's just, like, and he's not perfect, but... I remember like a young Colin Kaepernick when Alex Smith was the guy and they, they were doing really well yep. in San Fran with Alex Smith. And all of a sudden Colin Kaepernick takes over and he, he statistically, he wasn't like completing more passes. He, he wasn't like passing yards, but the added ability to run the football, to create outside the pocket, the off schedule throws, the flare, the pizzazz, it was electrifying to everyone that watched it. And, of course, I'm not going to compare him to what Colin Kaepernick did and, and the playoff runs that he made, but that kind of initial, wow, like there's something special here. Mm-hmm. And that kind of – that jubilation that you feel like at the stadium, like that's, that's what i got to compare it to. I, I don't think the, the play style is similar, but like in terms of how I, the – the, like the impact is of this guy? Yep. Oh, my God. Okay. That's an it's interesting like that, one. Bro. Yeah. So, let me – so, Jonathan, you can see it's BT and Sal here on the fan. Uh, Giants are still alive. We'll get to their playoff uh, possibilities in the Saints game in a sec. But, obviously, DeVito's the massive story. So, Jonathan, besides experience, which is the easy answer, what does he not do well enough? Meaning, mm. there's something that you see as a former player where you're like, man, I love this story, but I don't know if he's going to be good enough at whatever it might be. Anything? Yeah, I think the 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 ability to sit in the pocket and go through your progressions patiently on a consistent basis because he's definitely showed that he can do it. But the really great ones, the ones that have the long tenure in the NFL, the ones that go to multiple Pro Bowls uh, and, and voted all pros, they have a great knack for sitting in the pocket and delivering passes when they need to. And he showed signs of that last week. He showed signs of that a few a few weeks ago against the Commanders. And I would like to see him do it more consistently. And look, if he can figure that out to how to look like a quarterback when he's in the pocket, he's going to have a nice long career. And that doesn't mean being a starter. I don't know though. At this point, <laughs> well, I don't know at this point because everybody's like, "Oh, he's he's preparing himself to be a backup." I'm like, "God, he's three and one." Right, You know, the guy's playing some good football right now. Well, all the stuff that you just said, Jonathan, we're talking about Jonathan Casillas here, all the stuff that you just said that you want to see from him or what makes a quarterback good, like, have we seen that from Daniel Jones in five years consistently? Not consistently, but it was there last year. You, you saw Daniel Jones put the team on his back. Saquon was in and out of the lineup, and, and it was a little bit of a lull in the run game in terms of the running back position. But Daniel Jones stepped up, ran the ball as a quarterback, and designed runs. Uh, he tucked it. He was very decisive in, time, in, in terms of when they passed the ball. He would tuck it down and, and get first downs. He was a first down machine last year, and he would, he would, he would kill teams in terms of third down or goal line, situ- uh, excuse me, red zone situations, the Giants were top five in the league in red zone last year. It's because of Daniel Jones, and I can never take that away from him. No one could ever take that away from him. And then the ability to get to the playoffs and win a playoff game, 
The Giants haven't done that in 10 years. So you got to give him his credit. I'm not going to take that away from him. But this year, he wasn't the same player this year as he was last year. And hopefully the Giants get that guy back from 2022 next year. But we don't know exactly when he's coming back. And that is the big problem. But I think the Giants are answering that question. What if Daniel Jones is not healthy for week one? I think they're answering that question right now with Tommy DeVito. They're trying to. You know, I haven't said yesterday. I mean, if this keeps up, it, it could change what they do in the first round of the draft. I mean, if, if Jones is healthy and DeVito just goes bonkers the next couple of games, it could change how they – I think it's already changed. Yeah. I think it's already changed. Okay. Maybe, because if, 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 go if Tommy DeVito doesn't go 3-1 and one over the last four games yeah. and he stinks it up and they go 0-4, the Giants will be picking, what, second right mm. now? Yes, so it, but it's already changed. Well, already yeah, well, true in terms of draft slot. I mean, in terms of what they would target. Do you think so? Are you also implying that you don't think the Giants should take a quarterback in the first? Like, they, I know there's still four games to go, so it's hard to really you know, pin it down. But are, would you take a quarterback in the top ten? I gotta, I gotta let it play out. I have to let it play out because this kid keeps surprising me. I agree. You know, I gotta be honest. Yeah, he's uh He's a guy that I was in his corner from day one, given he's a Jersey guy. Hmm. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, man, the kid can throw. Oh, he can play. And then I watched this game. I said, oh, he has the kahunas to go ahead and drive the team down. While you're down at home, the crowd was going crazy. And finally, uh, you know, the, the Packers have figured out what they were doing and scored a touchdown late in the game. And all of a sudden, the pressure's on you. And he drove the ball right down the field. Beautiful passes. Great poise and patience in the pocket with the checkdowns early in the drive and then a beautiful pass to Wandell. I mean, he's showing us all of – he's making everybody believers. And this is like, the I think, the early stages of what uh, uh, of Vince Sanity was. Uh, Lynn Sanity, sorry. Lynn Sanity was over with the Knicks. And it's it's early, but if he, if he goes and – bro, if he can beat the Eagles – well, like you know what I mean. I don't want to jump too far down the road, but like a little start bit. Start with the uh, Saints, yeah. Jonathan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Super wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you, but the thing is, he has done this to me, and I'm not like this. I'm, I'm a, I'm a real, uh, realistic person, right? He's made me a little delusional, fellas. I'm sitting there thinking, like, hey, <laughs> yeah. we, we might be able to do something this year. <laughs> That's the impact. Well, that he's had on guys. Well, it's you know funny I mean? you it's funny you say it that way, Jonathan. We're talking with Jonathan Casillas. You can catch him on Giants pre and post game here on the on the fan during game days. You know, at some point you've got to believe in what you're seeing. And I just like everybody else was doubting him. And there's reasons for that. Well, he's undrafted, third string quarterback. He gets in the game. They don't even let him throw. However, we've seen him progress nicely here. He does it against a Bill Belichick defense. That to me was the first. Huh. Now, I don't even light it up, but he made some big plays in that game against Bill Belichick's defense, and they won. For an undrafted rookie to do that, that's something big. Then on Monday night, primetime Monday night against the Red Hot Packers team doing all he did. Like, at some point, it is what it is when you, what you're watching with DeVito, regardless of where he come, uh, came from or what his draft status was, he's having success. The other thing that I want to ask you is... How much of this is on Brian Dable showing that he can maximize a quarterback's ability and potential? I, I think you got to definitely give it to the coach because I don't think there's quarterback success in the NFL without a great head coach in that relationship. Quarterback, coach, offensive coordinator, you got to throw those guys in there. I think Mike Kafka called a great game last week. I think he was real creative. Uh, uh, the Packers did a good job in stopping the run early in the game, and they got real creative in the things that they did with the run game. The Wildcat came out. They started giving the, the ball to Wandale. They started getting the ball to uh, Saquon in different ways. And that is all, I think, a, a collaboration of quarterback play, head coach decision-making, and then the play calling that comes down from the offensive coordinator and, and the quarterback coaches. So it's a collective effort. You're not going to have a great quarterback without a good OC or a good head coach. I don't think that really happens. So I think Dayball showed last year that he can improve players. And this is the thing about uh, DeVito, guys. I couldn't have been sold on him. I was in his, I was in his pocket because he's a Jersey guy. Yep. But I watched him in training camp. It was seven-on-seven. Seven. He was scrambling on seven-on-seven. Seven. I'm like, what is this kid doing? It's seven-on-seven. Seven. You have to throw the football. There's no rush. <laughs> you know, and I saw that, and I was like, okay, he needs some time to develop. And then what I just saw on Monday, that makes that, – that, that progression from training mm. camp a few months ago to Monday night football is, is – is, 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 I can't even put it into words. Stark. Like, he's so Stark. impressive, guys. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's 
crazy. That's a good. Uh, that's a good assessment. Good stuff. He's finding open guys, making the right reads, tucking it, and running with it. Look, nobody's saying he's perfect, but we're actually seeing it play out here at the NFL level, and he's winning games. And it's been fun to watch, Jonathan. We'll keep it going. Giants Sunday in New Orleans. Looking forward to that and your coverage, of course, as well on game day here uh, on The Fan. Thanks again for your time, Jonathan. We'll talk to you next week.